she was she she uh, okay so the, she, the, here's the story she was like there was a man who was a very hard-working construction worker he was a builder and he used to build some of the most gorgeous beautiful houses for some of the most wealthiest of people on the earth his boss absolutely loved him because he was his best employee he did the best finishes and he was always the foreman hired to oversee construction work and this man worked for 30 years with by the sweat of his brow investing all of his might and fever in these projects these buildings then he reached his retirement age and he was now to go home and rest he had spent his entire career building homes fancy ones for the wealthy and just before he retired his boss was like jimmy let's say his name was jimmy just before he retired he was like jimmy i know that you are retiring but i want you to embark on one last project one last project jimmy and i want you to build in this project the most beautiful house of this size with this many bedrooms that you ever can possibly build i want you to procure the best materials for it i want you to bring your best men on it to help you along and i want you to do the best finishes everything must be to the t pristine and absolutely perfect this will be your last project and i will pay you handsomely for it just one last job jimmy will you do that for me jimmy all exhausted on some oh i was about to go and retire this guy is he serious he is still out here plundering my my, my hard labor i'm tired but then outwardly jimmy tells his boss guy fine okay i'll do it for you boss i will you've been good to me all these years you've paid me well my family's fed because of you my turn went to school so i will build this one house for you but jimmy unbeknownst to the boss guy was exhausted and embittered even by the fact that he lives in this lowly home with his wife and children while he has been building homes for the wealthy and so bitterness basically caught up with him that how am i how am i retiring to this shack this meager dwelling premises while how am i retiring to this lackluster environment while i spent my whole career building homes for the wealthy and with that attitude jimmy went on right ahead to basically disregard the instruction of his boss guy instead of hiring the best of his men he just got one or two random dudes in these streets that could help him quickly do a um a a, 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 a job like just get it done over and done with like real fast and furious so he did not get the the, the best of his uh it, it, you know construction employees that very potentially he did not get the best of his construction employees that could very potentially make it clear or highlight you know when a half a job is being done when the foundation is not being dug properly when yeah he wanted he hired men on the job that would be happy to also cut corners not only did he do that in terms of procuring materials he did not want to wait for the, the amount of time that it would take before for, for him to perhaps order marble kitchen tops and then they say that it's going to take six months for them to be available he didn't want to wait six months so he went and got some makeshift look-alike marble counter top uh table what is this a kitchen top it's not really marble but it looks like marble we can get fake marble the boss won't know the boss won't know his taps instead of getting proper gold because it took too long to order or he would have to travel to a particular destination to, to, to order them he went around the corner to you know the nearest little builder's warehouse and just got whatever he could instead of procuring them from the best of suppliers that he could find in this city that he was living in jimmy then went on right ahead to get to work build this house in super record time with the worst men that he could ever hire on the job and finished it and outwardly it looked beautiful but the tabs that were supposed to be made with real gold were fool's gold the marble kitchen tops were not really marble the uh, particular wooden oak finishes weren't really that you get my point whatever could be the raw materials that are used in order to build a, a high-end top class home he got second grade if not third grade materials top of that the workmanship was lackluster too because you know him and his boys were cutting corners and lo and behold i bet you can tell where this is going when the house was then built and finished his boss was like jimmy thank you so much you've been one of my best employees and i'm so grateful for all the effort that you put in you have made me a wealthy man because of the homes that you have built for my clients so congratulations this is where you are retiring this is your home gave him that poorly built mansion that would have been his home for the rest of his retirement days that would have made more spacious rooms for his children and grandchildren and wife and all that jazz 
but he knew that he did second grade work, shoddy workmanship, and brought in the worst of his builders, and it's basically on shaky foundation. And he was going to leave that for his boss later to deal with when his client is now complaining of snags and all different kinds of things because the construction project, project was not properly um, executed. Jimmy's regret was voluminous, you would imagine. He cried, mourned like a baby. And when he was mourning and crying like a baby, his boss thought that those were tears of gratefulness. His boss thought that those were gratitude tears, like crying on some, oh, you gave me a mansion. Like all those people crying when Oprah gives them cars. You got a car for you, a car for you, a car for you. Yeah, this man got a mansion. And he cried. And his boss was like, don't cry, Jimmy, this is for you. It was an emotional moment with the boss not knowing that Jimmy's crying because he forged the job. That would be his present. You know, when, 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 when Mrs. Birkus told us that story in grade seven, I was like, whoa, I don't ever want to be a Jimmy. She was a really great storyteller. So she really grabbed us like she attached our attention to every last word we were hanging on to it and it was like dead quiet in the class and some of us were crying at the end of it on some oh jimmy wish you hadn't done that this is so sad because you worked so hard you worked so hard all those 30 years only for you to get a poorly built house how could you do that to yourself mm, yeah i will never forget that story and that story i guess was the basis of motivational foundation for why it is that every time in my particular life when i wanted to give up i remember that what if this is my jimmy moment and you know what guys i have been promoted in the past at the precipice of disappointing like jimmy how it is that i got a project management promotion when i was working at mtn uh was indeed through a an almost jimmy moment when i uh one second when i was working for mtn okay so before working for mtn i worked for kijima and at kijima i was a project manager intern like i was a trainee project manager right but i had not gotten enough a, a, a training on the job or experience on the job for a company like mtn to be prepared to interview me for a project management job so i had only like one year project management experience and mtn wanted people with like years and years and degrees and what have you so the recruitment agents uh, agency recommended me to mtn but mtn didn't want to call me for the project management job because i was under experienced however the man that will ultimately become one of my bosses was like i will see her because the recruitment agent keeps on hammering it down my throat that we must see this girl because she likes her so the recruitment agent uh, kudos shout out to her really really pushed my case to a point of annoying these people enough to see me uh literally 10 seconds into the interview i like just shortly after tell us about yourself i got stopped like dead break by these two people interviewing me a man and a woman and the man was like look Karabo, we like you and as you are interviewing right now you're well spoken you can give us all the right answers about project management um and you you probably will do well in the interview but at the end of the day but at the end of the day uh you you still don't have enough experience we, we can't just let you hit the ground running just because you were you know able to articulate yourself as to what project management is about however we like you and you you will have a future in project management are you prepared to come on board as an administrator like a program coordinator and then after six months once you've proven yourself then maybe you can start to see if you can't you know uh find a project management opportunity in the organization we, we don't let you go you came highly recommended by your Re a recruitment agent and as you're speaking to us now we also like you but we can't just go out on a limb and trust that you're going to be good peoples you know uh, and, and actually do the job well with this little experience we would like to retain you at mtn but not in the position that you're presently applying for and then he also guaranteed me that i won't be taking a pay salary because either anyway at kijima it was a contract um job that if at all they would make me permanent i was going to earn a lot more so what they offered me at mtn within that coordination space was even more than what it is that i was earning as an intern or trainee project manager at kijima so i did not get take a pay cut and that for me was incentive enough i was like okay fine i am going to work for an environment or in an environment where it is that they're going to be happy to train me and i will then ultimately do season get promoted so i took the job at mtn and my future boss that convinced me to take this um demotion he ran me around in circles, twisting in the wind <laughs> for not six months, but two years. <laughs> he told me that after six months, you will get promoted to project manager or you will vie for project management. You will apply. You will basically be put in a position to 
have proved yourself enough for us to consider putting you in project management. And he literally said to me six months. <laughs> he said six months. That man deceived me. Him and that woman. They both deceived me. And I, I was like, okay, I thought I was going to be doing this for just six little months. A year tops. Two and a half years progressed. And I was still a program coordinator. I had done everything that I could do. I had shadowed a project manager. I had done a, a professional track. What do you call this? Like a, what do you call it? Like a, uh, you know, where, when you are trying to build a professional track to get to another position what they like a i forgot what it's called but a career building uh kpi like um yeah i forgot the terminology for it but that thing that you do to say to your boss this is what i want to be in two years and what you're doing to work towards it i had done all that and taken all the steps in order to get there i had not only shadowed one pm but a lot of them and one of them even took me one of them even took me under his wing yeah, like attending his meetings and everything essentially sometimes even standing in for him when he's not available i was like basically half pm half program coordinator and i did this grinding like a dog like i felt like i was pulling like i was carrying a cross do you understand even though i wasn't born again in the blazing sun on the all the way to golgotha and i imagine that this is career suicide like i'm never gonna get to where i want to get people kept on getting hired anew vacancies kept on getting open for project managers and other people kept on saying, I was like, hey, yo, and I got disillusioned. I got just, I was like, they're playing games, these ones, dangerous ones at that. I got so disillusioned. And I don't know how many times I applied to leave MTN to outside, right? I, I just wanted to leave. I just wanted to get out and go somewhere where they're going to give me an opportunity. And I knew that if I left MTN, I was definitely not going to be leaving into a project management job because I couldn't only ap apply for a project management job as a project manager. I can't just go somewhere and be like a project manager you know having been an administrator before they're just gonna be like sorry why are you applying for this job you're not app appropriate for it even though i had one year project management experience before i'd taken all the courses i'd done pim bok i died at them. the project management um a knowledge body of knowledge all that i had done it all yo yeah and i was out here having these bosses i had three bosses I was out here dealing with these three bosses of mine like it was a senior manager and two program managers and these three bosses of mine just watching me dilly daddy bounce around on the spot on a beach ball going nowhere and i got so disillusioned guys so disillusioned that i started to literally low-key drop the ball i was just doing enough like i i would go to work on some kifi clearly i've clocked in my access card is registered on the system mm, open the laptop enter uh, send email do what i need to do during the day chill in the coffee shop for half an hour longer like i was basically just in annoyed irritated with my three bosses because they knew what i wanted and they were wasting my time i was like when i see you all you want is for me to be your administrator for life you like me it's clear but like a criteria for life you want me as your as your administrator for life because you trust me but at my expense at the expense of my career you trust me. You don't want to let me go. Hey, you don't want to let me go. And so you're going to keep me an administrator for five years just because you don't want to have to go and retrain another person. Mm -mm. I see you. I see. You. I was all oh, guys. I was I was embedded and the project managers. Mm. <clears throat> the project managers that I used to serve <clears throat> that that were part of the teams. I get that there were program managers who had project managers underneath them. And then there was a boss lady, the senior manager, who was my line manager. Mm. So I used to administrate the team's project management office thing, me and two other um, program coordinators, <clears throat> because the senior manager lady was um, was running teams of program managers. And each one of us co coordinators had two program managers teams to deal with. And it, it, these two program managers had pro teams of project managers underneath them. And we would administrate two teams of program managers with project managers underneath them but we all reported into the senior manager so we were her kids you know yeah type thing however we served her subordinates we served her program managers and their project managers attitude oh guys attitude you know uh t t t t t my t t ting ting attitude that i used to give sometimes especially monday mornings yo don't give me mornings the attitude that i would sometimes give to these project managers some of them i would look at them on somewhere now i can do better than you when 
I went to Alpha because I used the Yo Lazy. And because I well, I had access to their workflows. I had access to their projects. I have access I had access to their work ethic. Uh like when they dropped the ball on health checks and whatnot, I knew which project manager basically was just sucked. I knew which project manager was bad at their job. Because they were making my life a living nightmare in terms of uh, fulfilling the demands or the needs of my bosses my bosses who were the program managers and, and the senior manager they had kpis to meet and i knew which project managers were basically weighing everybody down and i would look at <laughs> these project managers that give me a hard time as an administrator in meetings sometimes and now they would give all these excuses for what it is that they were doing or not doing um and i would be like but no it's so much idea. i'd be like look how lazy this one is that one Always dropping the ball. That one never gives me what I need on time. That one never updates their project plan. That one never has their documentation in order. You should look at their documents empty inside SharePoint. That one. They ever took in my mind. I was just looking at all of them. Deep down inside, I was just like, oh, footy, they're not as good as I could be. <laughs> attitude i didn't know christ so i had that kind of attitude going for myself like i did not brittle my flesh or guard my heart none of that i was just running with the flesh and i would look at these guys on some you're not even that good mm. i had a just like a attitude vibe going mm. and uh that passive aggression oozed it was clear it evident it, it was obvious it like not obvious in an obvious 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 but it was obvious like but i was it was like low-key subtly obvious in a way that like, wasn't also i was embittered clearly but i did my enough right the enough that i gave was good enough it was loved i was liked what i'm trying to explain is that my bosses liked me even though they knew I was not giving my giving my all, and one boss, the very one, <laughs> the very one that was at the first interview that recommended me to the boss lady, that made me the boss lady's program coordinator, one of the boss lady's program coordinators, the one that lied to me about six months, yeah, he was one of the bosses, <laughs> one appraisal. <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, I told you guys that like this thing was subtle, but it wasn't. Um, I still was pulling my weight, but not nearly as well. My, it was pick up -able. If you were smart enough and tuned in enough, you would pick up Bukuti. I'm embittered. Okay. Yeah. One time that boss guy, you know, the one that lied to me about six months and I'm sitting here still in this job two years later. Yeah. One appraisal, he says to me, <laughs> <laughs> he said to me <laughs> He's like Arabo, we really like you <laughs> We really like you but how can I describe you? He even like literally looked into the sky to find the right anal analogy. He was like you are like a um a still quiet lake one end but on the other end you're like a raving volcano <laughs> He was like, you're like a still quiet lake on one end and it's tranquil and peaceful and easy to work with. But on the other side, you're like a raving volcano. So that ambivalence in me, where it is that I was working because I had to gather a salary and I was working because I was working. That was delivering enough fruit for him to see a still quiet lake. But there was so much ambivalence and irritation and anger, obviously, and disquiet and a lack of job satisfaction in me that I was then on the other side, also like a, a, a ravenous volcano. And I was like, oh, and when he said that, I knew exactly what he was saying. He used that metaphor and did not go and, and explain it even deeper. I understood immediately because I did have that ambivalence. I knew about it. I was angry and I was actively applying for jobs outside of MTN. And the only uh, ones that responded to me were trying to get me to do jobs that I imagined to be dead end. And so I stayed at MTN because I'm not about to go and move to another dead end space. So I stayed and I stayed and I stayed and I stayed and I was unhappy, I was disquieted, I was sad, I was a still quiet lake and a ravenous volcano in one sitting and this happened for two years and that El Batongazi, it was so bad that, it was so bad that one time I, um, 
well what you call them not one time sorry but like it was so bad that some meetings especially if there were morning meetings i would have a passive aggression in the meetings to a point where i remember one time my boss calling me after the meeting ended and she was like are you okay <laughs> you know i was like yeah i'm fine why she's like no because you were very quiet at the meeting i was like yeah no, i was just listening to you to, to you and the program manager speak after all i am the administrator i don't generally need to speak very much um just kind of listen to your instructions and affect them i'm fine i'm okay she's like okay now it's just checking in that's all yeah it, it was easy to pick up it was easy to pick up that i was unhappy and they knew why they knew why they knew why i was unhappy i was just being dragged through the mud it was going to take ten thousand years for me to get to where i wanted to get and all these vacancies that were being made available open they were not even trying to interview them me for them how long must i acquire all of this experience before you will give me the opportunity that i left project management for in another company in order to work here at mtn you demoted me and you told me that all i need is six months and here it is and i'm still here two years later so i was really bitter 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 like bitter like bitter i was really bitter in a way that was just overt it was clear okay but like i, I didn't lose my I, I didn't drop the ball i didn't underperform but i certainly did just enough i was merely just gliding by and that gliding by was enough for like i said my bosses to like me but they were possessive is that basic they were possessive they wanted to keep me so they don't have to i guess interview again and whatnot they were possessive frankly of all of us okay yeah and i was just not feeling any of that i was not trying to hang out in one job for like 10 years like i'm not doing it yeah whatever i'm in this uh situation and then uh, one of the program managers that I, I did not serve under that one in particular, right? But one of the program managers um, gets promoted. He goes and becomes a senior manager in another department. And so there's like a vacancy for a program manager, right? And one of the project managers underneath him, right, applied for that job and successfully interviewed for it. So a project manager got promoted to program manager filling the vacancy of the man that moved to senior management somewhere else. Okay, cool, Beza Mananas. He starts working. Well, like, congratulations for your promotion. You deserve it. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Uh, he's working now under my boss lady as one of her program managers. All right. And my boss lady gives him a project to do as his subordinate. And that project has something to do with consolidating a certain work field, um, a, a certain workflow process that would need the assistance of all of the program coordinators it would need the assistance of all of the program coordinators okay in uh in in the in the department altogether and i was i was one of them in the beginning there were three of us program coordinators but as the years progressed and they did reshuffling of structures we ended up acquiring like i think three more so nearly or four more so nearly like seven or something there were like seven of us program coordinators scattered across multiple project management teams and program management teams okay cool beans and bananas right i was one of the og program coordinators um i was one of the og program coordinators and so uh and also the most trusted he went and asked who's this the boss lady on some okay and this project that I am hooking up, that you want me to do, that's going to consolidate uh, consolidate these workflows for our teams. Um, you want me to work with program coordinators. Which one do you recommend? I I I, I, I you know I check in with first, tap on the shoulder of first. And this boss lady was like, "Carabo, go to Carabo, definitely Carabo." Like, Papa, like, I was out here passing so much shade to these people, right? I was obviously angry. Like, why are you wasting my life and my time? Why are you wasting all my skills? Why are you wasting my excellence in this, like, deadbeat job? What's going on with that? But despite me having that attitude, I was trusted. I was trusted. They, She liked me, clearly, and trusted me, clearly, the most. To a point where, when this uh, gentleman that had newly gotten uh, this promotion asked out of the program coordinators, who can I ask to, you know, perhaps help me spearhead, spearhead this thing, like commence it, like the project to consolidate these workflows. Which of the program coordinators can I trust to lead this in a way that is successful? That's going to consolidate everything in one bunch. And my boss lady was like, Carabo. Like she did not hesitate to give my name. And so when this dude tapped me on the shoulder on some Carabo, can I have a meeting with you? I was like, sure. Like hit me. All right. So I have a meeting with him. And then he gives me this job. Right. And ugh, guys, when he's speaking, I'm 
not outwardly now with a grandiose amount of attitude, right? But I am low-key in my heart and in my mind, squinting my eyes. I'm squinting, I'm rolling my eyes. I'm like, ugh, why me? Like, what, like, proper, I had that why me attitude. He calls me into this meeting by myself. I'm like, why don't you call all the program coordinators and ask them who wants to hit this machine? Hmm? What makes you think I want more on my plate than I already got? Hey, what's wrong with you? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it. I'm not acting it out yet. Okay? I got attitude. You're like, attitude. Alright? This man is, I just, I'm sitting with him in this meeting room. And inside, I'm grinding my teeth. I'm gnashing them like hell. I like, yeah. Deep down. I'm gnashing my teeth. He's out just giving me more work than I need. Mm hmm? He's actually giving me more work than I frankly am prepared to take in my stride. I'm disillusioned. I'm disquieted. I'm unhappy. I've been put left in a job for like 10 years. Okay, 20 million years. Going nowhere. When I was supposed to be in it for just 6 months. I am obviously, I'm like, you know, like I'm oozing. I'm giving. I'm, I'm out of the door. I've got one foot out. Y'all know I've got one foot out the door, right? I'm giving one day. I'm going to hand in my resignation. I have got that going. And it is felt. But they're, they're writing me out. They are writing out all that attitude. Okay? Because despite it, apparently, allegedly, I still was the best. I was still a top performer or whatever. So they kept me. And here it is that this man has been told, if you want somebody to spearhead a project, go to Karab. And I'm now sitting in front of this man, Algeta, asking me this big favor. I now have to go and gather all the program coordinators and start to basically motion his project and bring it to fruition. This thing that he has been given as a responsibility, he has decided to put me as head of it. And I was like, do you know how much I earn? And on top of that, you know how long I've been all up in this gangster job? Okay. Mm. And do you know how under heaven I just ain't feeling the fact that I was told I was only going to be in it for six months. And do you know how it is that I obviously am still going to be here after 10 years? Like, and you want me to do more than what is absolutely necessary? Is that what I'm getting from this interaction? You are asking me to do more for real. Evie, I was so irritated with that petition, but I didn't show it. This man is just asking me this job, right? And I'm like, okay, sure. I'm taking notes with a, with a big smile. All right, when, 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 when's your due date? What are you, okay? What are the um, uh, expected KPIs out of this? Well, what are the deliverables exactly? Okay, all right. Okay, now I'll, I'll, I'll schedule a meeting with the coordinators and um, and then we'll get this started, hitting the ground running. Mm. Okay, I'll let you know. I'll give you feedback. I'll give you feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, cool beans and bananas. I tell the, this, uh, this this new program manager guy that, uh, fine, I got it. Alright? And it's work. You can't not do a job that you're given. You can't ignore a job that you're given because then that's insubordination. Right? But I was so lazy for it and I was so uh, disillusioned still. Like, yeah, for all the reasons I've highlighted above that I just felt like you're adding more to my plate than is absolutely necessary, but whatever, I'll do it, okay? Mm, I, I commence this thing, we do it, I lead it, I finish it, I deliver for this man all the way to the end. I made a decision at that instance. Like, I told you guys that I have been like Jimmy. I've been like Jimmy. Where it is that this this gentleman, ne, all along I've been working hard and it's been yielding no fruit. It's been bearing no fruit, okay? I've been working hard, it's been bearing no fruit. My grumbling on the job, my disquiet and my irritation did not make me drop the board. I still worked as I ought have worked. I did not, however, work at the height I was supposed to work. I could have done a lot more excellently, but I didn't. However, my 50% or my 60% was so good that my boss recommended me to the gentleman, right? And liked me a lot, the most, I would imagine. I think I was her favorite. In spite of the fact that I was obviously ambivalent about what's going on over here, okay? I however got to a point of so much disillusionment that i now wanted to merely just kind of swing on a hammock like i just wanted to get through the day i wanted to put my talents in the ground that's what i'm getting at i wanted to stop working like i just did not want to do more because why what's the point they're just going to keep me in the same job forever what i need to do is leave mtn i imagine that the only way out of this was to leave mtn because I was never going to be given the right opportunity uh, type establishment thing. And then this new man gets promoted, then gets told to use Karabot to spearhead. He then takes the council and then do the project for him. It's like when this man was asking me to do this for him in the meeting, I was already thinking, this is too much, one bore. However, not, not so much however, as a result of him, I wanted to drop the ball and many times, many times, 
during the project that I was spearheading with the program coordinators. I wanted to drop the ball. I wanted to not give him feedback. I wanted it to drag out like many other projects always drag out at MTN. Something's supposed to last for two years and we are just still chilling on it in five years time. Yeah, I wanted it to be something that, you know, is taking time and keep on giving him feedback along the lines of we're not yet there because these are the challenges. These are the chocolate blocks. These are the bottlenecks. These are the, these are the, I wanted to give him one of those. It's MTN. Things are slow sometimes in these streets. Things are slow sometimes in these streets. Of course, slow sometimes. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get it done though, don't worry. I'm on it, I'm on it, I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that, but I promise you right now, it was the Holy Spirit, it had to have been, I was not even born again at the time. Every time I wanted to drop the ball on that project, I scheduled a meeting anyway, and I followed up, and I pushed it, and I pushed it, I pushed that card, Kisabatli. I was so disillusioned and so annoyed by literally everything, but when I wanted to drop the ball, I didn't. And the thing that made me make a last minute decision to do better than what I was hope that than what I was planning to do was obviously supernatural. It had to have been. It had to have been God. Because I was on the brink of insisting on disappointing that new man, that new program manager, because it does not matter. I had told myself. I had told myself that it did not matter if I disappoint him or do well by him. Because for two and a half years, it has not mattered that I have either done really well for my bosses or disappointed them. One guy once told me in an appraisal that I am both a quiet still lake and a ravenous volcano. In other words, I have such moments of excellence that they were worthy of a reward and accolade and yet I never got the reward or the accolade. So for me, it was like whether I do well or badly, it brings nothing to the table. It yields no fruit. It doesn't matter. So I was prepared to essentially start off on a bad note with a new program manager that that particular program manager man that project manager i had never worked with him before because he belonged to a team of a program manager that i was not servicing i was not servicing that team so he, he was never privy even to the attitude that i would sometimes give in meetings to the other project managers that i was that, that i was um, administrating under he never got to see me work because he was he belonged to a separate program and not he didn't belong to any of my program managers he belonged to a program manager that was whose administrator was another guy yeah so he he he, he wasn't you know the god worked out everything so he was not privy to how i'm just always so tired with all these project managers the attitude that i gave in meetings the um, obvious ambivalence the hunger that i had like i was angry because i was hungry for success and i was not getting it he was never privy to it because his administrator was another guy okay so that literally worked in my favor the whole time he was under my nose that man the whole time he was working around i knew his name hello goodbye good morning good afternoon what a what a what not but i never worked with him the only thing of me that he saw was my creativity because i was always made to oh, arrange these events and all these weird things i was just this like colorful person but he had never actually worked with me okay and that helped it helped because he never got to see the volcano and the lake. He never got to see what other project managers knew I could be. Cheeky full of bunch of attitude. Yeah. Mm. So this man, I was prepared to disappoint him. I was prepared to show him the side of me that really could not kill us. <laughs> and then uh, I'm here to collect the salary at the end of the month and I'm doing just enough. It's not like I'm not doing my work, but don't expect me to do more. Don't expect me to walk on water. I'm not Jesus. Like proper. Mm. I was tempted to give him that those vibes. I, I I just I literally wanted to disappoint him because I imagined that what's it gonna give? Don't nobody care. Nobody does anything with my prosperity in this place. When I do really well, don't nobody reward me. I'm still getting a five percent salary increase, six percent every single year. Like yeah, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I wanted to do that. I wanted to keep doing that. But something pulled me to do better. I wanted to make like Jimmy. I wanted to make like Jimmy and do a lackluster project, not put in the right tabs, not put in the right kitchen counters, not put in the right marble tops, not put in the right tiles, not put in the right foundation. I wanted to do what Jimmy did and it would have been the worst mistake I could have ever made because if he had chosen somebody else to spearhead this because I dropped the ball, that would have been the person to get the opportunity. That would have been the person. I decided to pull my weight anyway, even though I was really unhappy by with just the extra stuff i have to keep doing and one day this man schedules a meeting with me right on some kind of i'd like to see you for, for for something i'm like okay cool and i'm thinking that he 
he wants to discuss this thing with the program coordinators and extra stuff that he wants it done even though i delivered that particular project to fruition to the end right and in this meeting it was just such a massive pleasant surprise so i basically put in the right counters the right finishing touches the right everything even though i initially wanted to drop the ball I wanted to drop the ball and he calls me to a meeting. I'm sitting opposite him in the meeting like a neat little girl. And he's like, Carabo, you know, with this program coordinator thing that I asked you to do, it was one of my first projects and my boss as a program manager. And it got me rewarded well by my boss. She really liked how I delivered it. And I realized that really if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have been able to deliver to her that which made me proud of, made her proud of me as her new program manager. Essentially, I started off on a good note with my boss because of you. And I realized that you have absolutely everything that is needed and that it takes to be a project manager. So I have an open, hey guys, as I'm getting emo just thinking about it. What? He was like, I have an opening an open vacancy in my team and i have already spoken to my boss your boss that i want you to fill that vacancy i will keep it open i don't even want to interview other candidates i want you to fill that position but the interviews are yes before he could even spe finish speaking i was like what i was screaming in this room jumping up and down in this meeting room and i was like you what like are you what like what you what like you what what like you what what that's when i was literally out of my mind with shock i was out of my mind with shock like it came at me like a ton of bricks unexpected and i was just like ha, 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 ha. yeah this man was also telling me that this job is as good as yours we only have to go through the formalities of the interview but it's yours i want you to be one of my project managers guys <laughs> and he had already told my boss that i want Karabon to be my project manager and my boss this time around my boss this time around was like, I, you know, I can't be holding on to some people forever, you know. People gotta grow in these streets. Like, we gotta let some people grow. So, it's okay, it's fine. You can take her. <laughs> you can take her. She's been wanting to be a project manager if you want to give her an opportunity. I realize perhaps maybe I might have taken 10,000 years to allow her to move over because frankly I was selfish for her she was possessive she she was my bosses were possessive of me and it took one of the program managers being like can I take her and she then conceded she was like fine you can have Carabo I guess I'll go and I'll hire someone else somebody else will come and be my administrator it's all right it's all right she okay fine shall yeah she finally let me go she let me go and it was frankly because of her recommendation that this man ended up uh you know wanting me but I got the opportunity that I've been waiting for all this time because of the fact that I kept on working hard in spite of wanting to drop the ball because I imagined what did it feel like it's just a waste of time. What is the point? Like what is the point? Why? 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 Nobody rewards me when I do well. Nobody punishes me when I do badly. I'm just Aja in limbo. So I'm just going to keep being in limbo. And because the Lord is the one, I believe it was Jesus, it had to have been. The Lord was the one that, that basically low-key nudged me to do better by this man. Because this time he's different. He's not going to be like the other program managers that will sit and bask under the sun of your services and not acknowledge or give credit where it is due. He's not going to ignore the fact that you are good at what you do. He's not going to ignore the fact that you are in the wrong place. It's time now for your promotion. He's not going to ignore it. He's not going to ignore it. And so because I pulled my weight... This man motioned everything and I thought that, you know, just like things happening at MTN, you are to be getting given a promise in, in, in like Jan and like in, in the September, you're still out here waiting for it. <laughs> you're still waiting for the free, you're still waiting for the fruition of the thing they said is going to happen in March. In March, they, they give you the promise in Jan, say by March you'll be good and then in September you're still waiting. Yeah, I thought that maybe this was going to be one of those things where it is that I would still be waiting that much. Uh, for for something to give and no this man moved so fast with stuff so fast like within two months i was placed as a project manager but i was not a project manager my my boss took me away from him you see the, the thing about that boss lady is that she knew all along that i was in the i was not supposed to do I, I stayed in that job for longer than what, what what was absolutely necessary okay and it was her fault it was her fault and it was also the fault of her subordinates her program managers right they kept they held on to me possessively she knew what environment was best for me she knew what environment was the most fit for purpose for me maybe after four years she might have pulled strings to move me there right she had told a 
myself that maybe after four years, three and a half, I'll move Karabo to, to, to be a project manager in marketing type thing. But for now, and bask under the sun of, of, of my, uh, you know, like grandiosity. She's just going to be mine. But then somebody was like, I want her. And she was like, okay, look, I've been hoarding over here. Let me go. But once this man said, I want Karabo to come and work for me and gave me the job as a project manager. Yo, I hugged them guys, I thanked them, and it's funny. Every time I'd be like, thank you, thank you, thank you. He'd be like, don't thank me, thank God. He was a Christian. Look at that. He was a, he was a God-fearing man. I wasn't even saved at the time. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, I thank God, but thank you, thank you. He was like, don't thank me, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I would shortly after that get born again. Um, did not realize that God was moving all of these things on my behalf through these people. Anyway, whatever, so uh, once this man interviewed me like proper he was he did every he interviewed me i was supposed to work for him i was supposed to work for him yeah my boss because all along she had known that she was hoarding me and she knew where i belonged she took me from him she took me from him i was supposed to report under that man i as you guys if i had not gotten if i had not if i had successfully if i had been that man's project manager I probably would still have my career today because it was the sabotage of people in the team that I was working that got me fired. I would not have been in, in the front lines of battle, essentially, to lose everything. But anyway, whatever, that's another story for another day. I was taken away from the, this man at the last minute and my boss basically placed me in a team that was fit for my suite of talents. It's like she had been looking at me all of these years. She knew that I was a, 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 a creative, I was eccentric, I was a particular way and imagined that I would be best possible, best fit to go and work as a project manager servicing the marketing department instead of the, 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 the man was business marketing. So he was a, a marketing but for business, whereas we were consumer marketing. Uh, so they put me, she put me with consumer marketing because she imagined that that was a better fit uh, for me. So I ended up working under another boss, uh, working with different people because that's where it is that my boss had literally all along, that's what she was planning. She was planning on moving me there, but maybe, like I said, after four years, and this was now three and a half years down the line, she was maybe going to drag me through that heinous maze for another two years. She was going to turn me 30 all up in that position and then be like, okay, I'm back here, I'm back. She was uh, possessive. She and the other bosses and a new project manager, program manager is the one that what do you call this that that um, ended up uh, awarding me that opportunity so i end up working for another program manager but I, what i what i need you guys to understand is that what i'm trying to understand sorry what i'm trying to explain with that story is that if at all i had made a decision to not run where it is that other people are doing laps around me if i had made a decision to just walk or not give my all or give just enough um i would have stayed in a job that I didn't like for much longer some other person might have gotten the promotion that i got because they would have probably pulled their weight in a way that i didn't i would have disappointed a man that was put in a position by god to give credit where it is due and award acknowledgement instead of dilly dallying beating around the bush and causing a person to spin on the spot for years okay I was about to go and disappoint point the right person. What what I'm trying, basically the wrong person, but he was the right person placed at the right time. What I'm trying to explain is that in this world, you're going to get people that are going to delay your breakthrough deliberately, knowing that you're bigger than that, knowing that you're better than that, knowing you deserve to be elsewhere. Also be aware of your ambivalence. Be aware of how hangry you are. Angry because you're hungry. Be aware of what you can do, but absolutely refuse to acknowledge you in that regard. And take in their stride the irritation and the passive aggression that you are walking in. Because at, at the end of the day, you are um, beneficial to them. They will hold on to you possessively uh, at the peril or expense of your career or whatever it is that you're trying to do, knowing that you're better. And it, would, it will take somebody being raised up by God to take you out from underneath possessive people. Somebody that will ultimately eventually do what is better. And these possessive people will admit that, okay, so I've been hoarding. They will literally admit that they've been hoarding you. And they will let you go when somebody decides to finally acknowledge you. But all along, they will have literally been hoarding you. And that's why you gotta work hard in spite of how long you've been in this grain and whoever gets brought in for you to do new favors for, new projects for, work heartily as unto the Lord for those people 
because you don't know if they are potentially not your olive branch, your breakthrough, the final destination, the person that is going to finally not let you be really good and ignored. The person that will finally give you the job opportunity because they see that it's yours. Yeah, you don't know who amidst all the plethora of people that could be put in front of your face are that guy or that girl, the person that is essentially the pharaoh of Joseph. The person that is essentially the, the, the person that ultimately awards a waiting person their deliverance, their breakthrough. You don't, you don't know when you have finally met your pharaoh. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't know when you have finally met your, uh, your Darius as Daniel in the lion's den. Like a person that is going to give credit where it is due. Reward you for what it is that you have rightly worked for. And so therefore deserved. You don't know. So that, that, that very wise sage story that my teacher in primary school gave is applicable even in this Christianity that we are walking. God makes it clear, whatever you do, work heartily as unto the Lord. Don't throw your talents away. God is going to call you a slothful servant. So you have a duty to God to work hard. But over and above the trust that God will himself place the right people at the opportune moment, at the opportune time to acknowledge you where others have blatantly disregarded that this year is a waste of a person's time. But they don't know that. <laughs> they don't know that. They don't, they don't know. Nobody else knows that I'm wasting Karabo's time. So they will just hoard you. They will just hoard the living daylights out of you. There are people that are going to basically rescue you from being hoarded by possessive people. There are so many people littered across corporate South Africa or everywhere where it is that you might find yourselves that are hoarded by possessive bosses. Bosses that cause you to quit your job to move to another company in order to find a place where you can be able to move. Even though if you had stayed in that company, you would have been promoted in that company. And so therefore started off from that elevated position. You would have been given that springboard. In order for you, Lord Raha Ultra, moving to another company, you're starting for on a very lofty note. Yeah, but there will have been such barriers to entry to you that you will end up literally leaving a job that was the best environment in which for you to grow. But you left because they just kept you in a grain. Even though you were the one that was training everybody. You were the one that was this and that. You were the one that was the best at this and that. You, frankly, were so trained at the job that you are too inherent inherit in the future that you are basically teaching even those who do that job their job like you know how it is that i was with, with project managers i would look at them on some when i'm better than you when i'm better like people that were dropping the ball like no man's business i was an administrator and was privy to their work ethic and i would look at them and i'm like you're collecting that big side chunky project management salary Mara, you suck like you're lax in comparison to every but to uh, many of these other project managers and in comparison to how i would do if i was uh, a project manager you are bad. You are not good at what you do. You are not good at what you do. And yet you're the one with the job. Yeah. When when you are so ready to do a job that you are already better than people who are already doing that job. And yet people are wasting your time. God knows that. And he sees that pain. He recognizes the fact that there are others who love to hoard people and twist you in a wind until you feel like you have run out of breath. God knows. God knows. And he will raise someone up. I need to use the bathroom. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, all right. Yes, so basically, Kefele the guy. Yeah, I was speaking about how it is that dropping the ball, first and foremost, it's um, it's ungodly, right? We should not do it because that's the throwing away of our talents. God is going to call us wicked and slothful. Whatever we do, we must work heartily as unto the Lord. And whatever we do as well, whether we eat, whether we drink, we must do it all for the glory of God. So it's godly to not be lazy or to drop the ball. But it is also beneficial. You know, the Lord does not merely give instructions if they don't reward you. Uh, it is written in his word that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when you hold fast to him, he's not merely going to keep you in a grain that is heartbreaking while you just in a very, uh, uh, you know, ascetic way fashion while cutting yourself and beating your flesh into submission and denying your flesh and all that jazz you're gonna get nothing at all out of it no he rewards in due season just like it's written in his word that do not grow weary of doing good but in due uh, uh, okay. do not grow weary of doing good for in due season you will reap the peaceful fruit of righteousness if you do not give up that is what the bible says so you will reap eventually and in the season of your waiting it's written that god is going to renew your strength 
Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint, right? That's that's just the promises of God. You never know when you are dealing with a man or a woman that is going to finally give credit where it's due. Sometimes you are in an environment where it is that literally everybody there, everybody there is going to ignore the glaring talent that you have. And the only reason why that's the case is because God for a season is allowing that's the situation and then next thing boo somebody will get hired on the job somebody will move into your complex somebody will move to your gym somebody will basically be placed where it is that you are at that's going to suddenly give you what all this time has been glaringly obviously ignored as obviously yours you understand what i'm saying like it happened with that man that gentleman that got promoted from project manager to program manager he was a project manager all along and in absolutely no position to award me any job at all and then one day the one guy got a job elsewhere and then the vacancy got opened he got promoted to that job and within a matter of months i was a project manager because of someone that was not there all along he was not there all along but that's what god was planning that somebody else would move in so do not look around scanning the periphery do not merely scan the periphery on the left and on the right of you looking at literally nothing but naysaying people naysaying colleagues people that you know will never do right by you people that you know will never do anything that is sober and sound People that you are aware are just gonna hoard you like boxes in a house that is already cramped and there is nothing you can do. Do not look at your ecosystem panning your head left and right and be disillusioned by obvious saboteurs. People that are obviously never gonna do good by you unless they get like a soul on the road to Damascus moment meeting Jesus and suddenly getting born again. Unless that happens, you are literally in a dead beat dead end desert zone with a tumbleweed rolling around it and with you seeing nothing but the mirage of your prospective promotion it's a mirage and it will only ever stay a mirage until some new dude starts working for your company or a client a client that is your company's uh you know uh biggest like honcho client guy when you go and have a meeting at his premises and has and then he has a conversation with you and is like how would you like to come and work for me how would you like to quit that job that you're at and work for me because i like what it is that other services that you are offering me i'll take you is a client and it's a new client that has newly signed on to your firm and he is only working for you now for two months and then he basically snatches you he head hunts you he steals you from under your boss because he likes you this client was not the client of your company a year ago, two years ago, two months ago. He was toggling between giving the job or the contract to another firm. Literally your firm and the other, and, and two other firms were vying for his contract. Your firm wins that contract. And that client is like, hey, how are you? Karabo, how are you? Pinky, my narinele, Tebo. I really like you. How would you like to quit your job at that company and come work for me? massive salary increase big chunky opportunity to finally do what it is that you've been wanting to do all along where was this guy two months ago being basically uh what is this um headhunted he was being sought for business by your company where was he three years ago nowhere to be found in the market because he was startup he was a startup entrepreneur where was this guy six months ago when you are applying for a job elsewhere out there because your present company your present boss does not care to give you a promotion he was busy petitioning for a company to take take on his particular books to either underwrite them if it's insurance or to uh, give them benefits if it's again insurance if it is an it company he needs this particular software for his company yeah and he's busy literally scouring the market for an it firm to provide these services and you work at that it firm two months ago he was looking for this opportunity and two months later he has chosen your firm and a month later he has decided that he wants to steal you from your company you literally don't know where these guys are going to come from so don't look at your company and your boss or your colleagues that will never say anything right about you or your just don't look at the dry little desert where you are seeing the mirage of your prospective promotion as the dead end recognize that wherever you are placed god has put you in the right environment you are perfectly 
placed. You are perfectly placed. It's written in Psalm 139 that um, the Lord has set apart every last one of our days in advance before any of them comes to pass. So God knew that you would work in a job that is dead end with a dead end job, with a dead end boss and dead end pol uh, colleagues, dead end possessive bosses. God knew that you would be there and they would refuse to acknowledge that you deserve the promotion. They would refuse to admit that they keep on making you train some people, even though you're the one that should rather be getting that job. They will just ignore it until, like I said, a new client works for your firm or getting contracts with your firm or they will uh, completely ignore you until some basically something is going to eventually give. That's what I'm getting at. Something will eventually give. So don't look at your desert. Don't look at the Kalahari gawking at you with dust blowing in your face and your boss just keeps on asking you for the new minutes, the new this, the new that, the coffee and you are just like rolling your eyes on some I'm gonna die here, I'm gonna die. Top of that, every job that I apply for out there in the wilderness is a dead end. Like I'm gonna die here, I'm gonna don't. You don't know who's coming. You don't know who's gonna waltz into that door. You don't know what new colleague is gonna work that is in a senior position that's gonna promote you working for their team. You just do not know. So hunker down and not only hunker down, work. Like work, what is important is to work. Don't ever let your work ethic fly out the window because whatever you do, you ought rather work heartily as unto Jesus Christ. You must work as unto the Lord, not for man. Because the moment you, you, you think that you're working for man, you're going to feel like you're squandering my skills. You, you are using me. You, you are ironing me flat like, like, like a shirt. You, you, I see you. You, you just want me to be here for 10 years. You will literally look at your boss as we are as wooting as wins and got your yeah.